Well, we are with our elephant. It's slowly moving towards Treehouse Dam, so we're trying to just keep up with it. So we're doing window bashing of our own at this stage. Just careful there, Craig. But I must apologize to our big friend here because he's, even though he's in muss and has this sort of gaping wound, he's probably one of the most gentle of the muss bulls that I've seen in a long time. He hasn't in one way given us any sort of negative response. He hasn't at all given us any trouble. He's been an absolute gentleman as he's walked around. And isn't that a cool picture of him reaching up and getting his marula tree? Well done. Now, the smell emanating from him is pungent to say the least. He's got this sort of must smell. So Maggie, the wound itself is being masked by the must smell. So that dribbling that you're seeing around his sort of genital area, you can see it just between the back legs there. You see it dripping? Now that is full of testosterone and it has this very pungent sort of smell to it. It's not, I don't know how to best describe it, but it is not very pleasant at all. And that is far outweighing any of that wound that we see there. That's not going to be sort of smelling too good itself. Ah, so you were wondering what must smells like. Well, it's a difficult smell to to sort of describe, but it's it's very chemically the smell, and it's got this sort of pungent chemical note to it that gets up into your nose and it kind of sits between your eyes and catches you there. It almost reminds me a little bit of how bleach smells when you smell it in terms of how bleach kind of catches your nose and really kind of sort of singes your nostrils. It's the same kind of thing with must. It doesn't smell like bleach, but it is a similar kind of sort of pungent smell that it, it that comes out. So I know that doesn't make too much sense, but it's difficult to, to kind of make sense of it all, but it has a very chemical smell to it. Well, that's how I feel. Craig, how would you describe it? Meh. Oh, Chemically. Yeah, so chemical. Stuff they put on top of rubbish dump. Ah, so rubbish dump. Craig says it's like stuff that you put on top of a rubbish site. So like that creosote kind of stuff that just to neutralize the bacteria and things that are there. So I suppose you're right, actually, Craig. That's probably a very good way to describe it. Now you can see that this bull has latched onto a massive marula branch. He's pulled down a huge branch and. I wonder if he's not making the most of these leaves before they all drop off because the marula trees in the next little bit are going to start losing their leaves probably within the next sort of I would say two or three weeks um, we've already started to see some of them dropping leaves already so he's probably making the most of those leaves now although it seems like he's feeding a lot of the branches themselves and not actually the leaf structure so you can see he's putting the sort of branch in and then he'll roll it around and try and kind of strip it of all that cambium that is on it. It's quite cool to actually listen to him just crunching down. So Darcy doll, you say he looks in pain? Well, I suppose it is painful. I mean, a hole in your stomach is never going to be the most comfortable of things, but he's really like I say, I would have thought he would have been in a far worse mood than what he is in right now. He has let us follow him all the way through the thicket. He walked past us without even a head shake. He hasn't in any way been aggressive. So even if he is in a bit of pain, it seems like he's kind of almost not too stressed about it. Um, maybe it's gotten past the point where it's very painful. I don't know, but he certainly has got no ill temper towards us. He's been an absolute gentleman this, uh, this morning. So if he is in pain, well, he's certainly not showing it, that's for sure. But 